Surface Grinder Basics Part 1. In this video we are going to cover the 6 second rule, make a plan for touching off in the right spot, and also how to touch off, and how to dress the wheel. Let's get started right now. Don't forget about our 60 seconds on, 60 seconds off, okay? 60 seconds on, allow the wheel to run for 60 seconds before you do anything. Off, you let the wheel run for 60 seconds so that if there's any coolant, the centrifugal force will actually blow the coolant out of the wheel and you won't get any heavy spots in the wheel. And also, when I turn something on, I want to turn it on with my left hand so I'm facing away from the equipment instead of my right hand, where if I turn it on, it blows up. So now I'm going to turn it into the on position. Do not go from demag to on, because that could be actually quite dangerous for the machine. First thing I'm going to do before I start is I'm going to measure this before I put it down. I'm going to measure all my thickness and say, I'm pretty much flat, I'm good to go, because I machined it. Obviously I didn't this one, but pretend I did. So, where do I touch off? Let's look at number one. What happens if I touch off in number one spot? If I touch off in number one here, and something happens that I didn't have the magnet on, this part, because the wheel's spinning this way, will be launched. Okay, and that's the opposite of what we want. Well, let's take a look at number two. If I turn around and touch off here, the part will be pushed out of the way if it slips off. I turn around and I touch off on number three. I'm going to do a visual reference for three. Okay, so let's say I touched off on number three here. Same thing would happen, it would just push out of the way. Number four would be an incident, and number five would be a bit of an incident as well. Well, which one's right? We agree that number two and number three are the best ways to go. What differentiates the difference between number two and number three? Well, number two is the best way of touching off. Why is number two better than three? I can see all of my workpiece when I touch off on number two. When it's here, I cannot see the rest of my workpiece. So therefore, I can't see if there's any issues coming up. So ideally, you always want to touch off on the back right-hand corner. Now I'm going to turn the wheel on. First, before I turn the wheel, I check my workpiece. All good. And I turn my wheel on. How do I touch off? I have to be in continuous motion when I'm coming down. If not, because the wheel's round and touches on the point, you won't see it until it's too late and you'll already be five thou in. So you want to be continuously moving back and forth. And ideally lots of light in this situation. So now I'm going to lower the tape, the lower the head down into the table, and I check my workpiece is tight. And I want to touch off in the back corner. I lower it down, and then my eyes cannot be up here looking down this way. My eyes need to be this way looking in. Because if not, I won't know the, the gap distance. I think I'm pretty close. Now at this point in time, I'm going to go back and forth slight, slowly. And slowly, slowly lower the head down. If you have a problem seeing, what some guys will do is they'll take a white piece of paper and put it in behind. And that helps sometimes. And there's a few other tricks that we won't get into in this introduction video. Okay, so now I've touched off. I can zero my wheel. Zero. And then I can start going over the whole piece. Now before I put any power feeds on, I want to go over my whole continuous piece to make sure that there isn't something stuck underneath or anything along those lines. So I'm going to dress the wheel. So where do I put the diamond? Do I put it over here, over here? 
Now, what is over here? When I look straight down the center, this is ahead of the wheel, this is behind the wheel. It's very important to know the difference. Why do I place it slightly behind the center line of the wheel? That's because if I forget to turn the magnet on, if it's a, in front of the wheel or ahead of the wheel, it'll actually grab it and launch the part out. If I don't have the magnet on, when I touch off behind the wheel, it'll actually push the part out of the way. Now let's touch off. I'm approximately where I want to be, right around here-ish. I'm going to lower the, the, lower the head in slightly. See the mark in the wheel? Okay, I'm about five thou in, so I'm going to go out. Then I'm going to go back again. Then I'm going to go down slightly. See how? See the pace I'm going at? That's the exact pace you want to go at. You don't want to go too slow. You want. You don't want to go too fast, unless you're at more of an advanced class. Too slow will dull the grains going across. Too fast will release them too aggressively and you will have a coarser wheel than what your actual wheel says. Okay, so now let's take a look at the end here again. So do you see how it's much whiter than when we started? That's what you want. In this case, truing and dressing are the same thing. Okay, when you're balancing the wheel, you put it on the first time, you're actually truing the wheel. In this case, we're dressing to release some of the dull grains. Well, this concludes Surface Grinding Basics Part 1. Part 2 will be posted soon. If you want to see other awesome videos, please go to my YouTube channel, Shop and Math. Also, if you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. It's free, and it'll help me out. All you have to do is click on my face, and I'll do the rest. Have an awesome night.